So, got my copy of Dream World Pogi in, and I think I'm going to go ahead and take it apart. I already tested it out, so it's fine. And I'm going to see if I can dump the ROM and load it on an emulator. Okay, just got a couple of Phillips head screws, which I already undid. And there's the PCB. So, looking at it, it looks like we got a 161, a 32, some SRAM in the character in the character area and we got one megabit EP ROM single use and of course CIC but I got top loader so it doesn't matter for me so looks like it's probably just using a UN ROM mapper so I'm gonna go ahead and desolder the mask ROM see if I can add a header to it and load it up in Nestopia All right got the hiccup warmed up let's go ahead and get with the desolder There we go, it came off a lot easier than 20 year old solder. This one's being a little bit stubborn. There it goes. Looks like it's an Atmel AT27C010. So, go ahead and take that over to the programmer and see if we can read it. Okay, gonna go ahead and start the ROM of the programmer. Change the device. And I went ahead and grabbed the Castlevania ROM because that's on ROM also, so I can pull the header off of that one. Go ahead and load them both up in a hex editor. Now I'm not sure what the mirroring is for Dream World, Pogi, and Castlevania. I'm not sure if it's the same, but we can always fix that later if they're not. And got to change that bin to a .ness. All right, and let's see if the ROM loads up correctly. There we go. Now let's give it a quick play and see if the mirroring is correct or not. Mirroring's not. Then we'll get a lot of weird scrolling issues, which I'm not seeing here, so it looks like everything is good. Must use the same mirroring as Castlevania does. And now I have that in my collection, and I can play it on an emulator using save states. Because there's no password system in this, and who's got time to just play video games straight through anymore? 